Hi guys. Some of you will be aware of my concerns with tackling this week's job. And thank you for those who offered suggestions. I've used rock moulds before, but I'm trying to model a particular look with these rock faces. Moulds or cork just wouldn't look right. The route I decided on is foam. This is XPS. It's a common material used by diorama builders. And it's pretty versatile on what you can do with it. I'm going to attempt to replicate what's up at Nankwernal with some techniques I found. The first is using a hot wire foam cutter, and it's already shown its flaws. Due to the wire being quite wide, I can only really make long consistent marks. I've tried just using the end for smaller marks, but it's just not working, so that's out. The next is to literally just rip tiny bits away from the block bit by bit. Okay, this looks more unique, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. Then I realised that I have this double-ended tool. I don't know where I got it from or what I plan to do with it when I bought it, but this is the first time I've actually picked it out the drawer. Today's the day. I did plan to use the pointy end, but it's actually just tearing at the foam, so I quickly swapped over to the long flat side. As the rock and Nankwernal has long, almost slit-like marks down it, hence the attempt with a hot wire cutter, I thought just jabbing at it might do the trick. With the aid of the knife to help get sharper edges, I'm actually quite impressed with the texture that this is creating. It's consistent in that it's all similar markings, but it's small enough that it's seen as random. So I'll give this a go. So the first thing I'm doing with the fresh block is to use the knife to cut the main distinctive shapes into it. Once again, I'm following the reference photos to get something that slightly resembles the prototype. If it's not become apparent to you through the medium of, well, my anxiety around this, I'll point out that I have not made rocks like this before. So if you're a seasoned phone scriber, please don't hate me if I do something silly. Aside from just the scribe in itself, I can also use this tool to dig out sections of foam to create some 3D depth. Actually, that act itself seems to give a nice texture. So as per the test piece, I'll begin to imprint with the tool. I'm going to work in small sections at a time. And I've also used a small flathead screwdriver for smaller dents. I mentioned this while fiddling with the test piece, but I found it really useful to slice the foam with a knife before starting the scribing. This is because it not only gives some dense sharper edges, but it also acts like a guide in keeping any marks in a similar direction. I don't really have a strong method with this tool, and as you can see at this point, I'm almost rubbing it down the foam. This is ripping tiny pieces, but I'm hoping it'll add to the final texture. getting quite confident with this now, and where I finish scribing, it's really starting to look quite good. So I'll continue doing the same stuff over the rest of the block. I've adapted my style here once again. This time it's mutated into a fast jabbing action. You may laugh, because I did when I started, but it's quite a contrast to everything so far, and I'm loving what it's doing. And whilst I'm going to scribe the whole block, only a small percentage will actually be visible at the time I complete the layout, due to greenery and terrain that I need to build up in front of it. But I thought it was a safer option just to do the whole thing, just in case.
That's the complete block done now and it's sitting in position. I've actually cut the bottom of the rock now so the rock face will lean back at a very subtle angle. The issue here is that this one block won't exactly fill the required space. So I'll repeat the process on three more blocks. Two to lengthen this particular section and one for near the head shunt. As the rock face works around the bend, I need to not only cut the edges of the block so the faces sit flush, but also connect them together so I can easily continue the pattern across the joins. I'm using cocktail sticks to hold them together for now, as they don't need to be permanently attached. With the blocks held tight, I can first use the hot foam wire cutter to form the blocks across the joins. Like the polystyrene a few weeks back, the cutter really works incredibly well with XPS foam. With the main cuts done, I can then start to fine tune the foam with a knife blade. You can see how I'm carefully merging the new block with the previous. The second block then begins to get the same treatment for the texture, and when I'm done, the third and fourth blocks will follow. I decided it would work best to paint the rock faces in situ, so I'll use a hot glue gun to fix them to the layout. I'm only gluing the main block at this point, and I'll remove the cocktail sticks once the blocks are glued down. They're not going anywhere. With that set, I'll continue to glue the remaining parts. These pieces needed a bit of foam cut off the back so they sit flush up against the polystyrene bank behind. With all the scribing done, I can move on to the painting stage, and I'll kick this off with a base coat of black primer. This will do two jobs. The first is to give something for the acrylics to key to. The second is that it'll hopefully completely cover the blue foam, including in all the crevices. So where the next few coats of paints don't hit, the black will show through and not blue. This job actually used way more paint than I was expecting, and I haven't diluted the black down at all as I wanted a good thick coat. With all the black dry, I'll add the main colour, and as I'm dry brushing this on, you can see how my plan with the black is working. All the little jabs during the scribing is really paying off here as it's showing so much detail. I'm trying to keep the paint application on the downstrokes to encourage shadows below. The next shade of grey is applied in a different method. The tool in hand is just a scrap piece of packing foam material, and I'm using this to dab paint onto the rock face. This is given a very different look to the paintbrush. The only issue at this point is that the rock is, well, grey and rock isn't actually grey, so I need to add more colour variation. The first is a very pale greenish colour. With the rocks up there covered in lichen, this seemed an obvious choice. I'm applying this very diluted so the paint will start to wash around the rock texture, giving softer edges. I 
I've also added little bits of brown in much smaller patches. It's getting there, but it's still lacking something. I know what it is. Black wash. I decided that enamel wash would be the best way to go here. And I'm glad I did. The wash instantly changes the look of the rocks. And whilst it looks really dark, it will lighten up as it dries and makes its way downwards. I'm starting to think my motto is, when in doubt, apply black wash. The black wash has actually dried lighter than I was expecting, but it's given depth to the piece, so that's a win. The final layer here will be weathering powders. I'm using a pale green, but also browns and off-whites to give a little bit of variation to the rock. And remember, only small sections of this will be visible. And I'll need to add the moss and like before the end. So, there we go. I embraced my fear and dove in. And I'm glad I did. I think that the rocks look pretty good. Not brilliant, but good. And as I said, this was my first time doing something like this. What this was, was fun. And that's what this is all about. It's important not to forget that. Some jobs obviously suck, and we all have our preferences, like I hate wiring and wood. But in the end, it's a hobby that helps us relax and take our mind off everyday stress. The rocks look pretty big here, and of course, most of it will be covered by the end, which is almost a shame. And to help you with the scale of the thing, let's run a train past. Okay, that might have been an excuse to run a train, but I don't hear you complaining. This week was a win. I've learned new techniques that I can use on future projects. And with the slate walls last week and the rocks this week now complete on the layout, I can move on to forming the land around them, which will hopefully deter my toddler from jabbing the foam with pointy objects. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.